I thought overall, you know, we're obviously very pleased with the outcome. Um, I thought in the first half, I think the headline at half time that we said to our players was that we were playing the football, but AFC were creating the chances. Now, they weren't clear cut chances, but they were having shots from the edge of the box, they were putting crosses in, and I just felt, yes, we were 1 0 up at half time, but really Benson's goal was our only clear chance in the first half. There might have been another half chance, but look, you have to be clinical. We were solid, we were strong at the back. We wanted, and we did in the second half, step up a little bit further and sort of try and keep them away from our goal more. Um, but we also had to simplify our game. Sometimes in the first half, we were trying to do too much with the ball. You know, maybe with the cameras on and with the big crowd, some of our, mo our more technical players wanted to show their full repertoire of what they had. In the second half, I think we simplified things a little bit, give and goes, one and two touch football, runs in behind. And, and that just opened AFC up a little bit more. And it could have been more than the two, really. You know, Benson's had another chance um, that he was unfortunate about. We also, like, the referee told me at full time that the goalkeeper hasn't touched um, the player. I don't know, I'll leave you guys to decide whether the goalkeeper touched the player or not. But I was pretty confident it was a penalty at the end. But look, we can't be greedy. 2-0, two, two good goals and a clean sheet, which we said before the game's been lacking a little bit this season. And if you want to win a league title again, if you want to def defend a championship, you've got to keep clean sheets. Yeah, it was very clear. If, if you watch AFC play this season, um, their main goal scoring threat is through crosses and also first time shots from the edge of the penalty box. That's where all of their goal scoring chances have come from, um, whether it's deeper crosses or higher crosses. And then the second ball is important because even if you clear the first one and you saw we weren't too happy at half time because they were getting those shots. I think they maybe had three shots from the edge of the area off second balls. So we needed to do better. Um, I also thought we needed to do a little bit better in terms of preventing the cross. I sort of thought maybe the wide forwards could have done a little bit more in the first half to help uh, Jeffrey O'Chang and Rooney Onyango because it's hard when they're sending their wide players up. But we know AFC don't play through the middle very much. In fact, their middle's quite vacant. There tends to only be two players in the middle in their attacking phase in front of each other, not even beside each other. It's almost very narrow. And... Yeah, so we knew to expect that. Um, we knew that Kennedy and that um, Emery Baisenge would be very strong there. And look, coming into the second half as well, being able to bring on someone like Ernest Wendo and Alpha Nyango again to give that energy, but also that robustness right in front of the defensive line, made, made sure that we kept the clean sheet. Um, ignoring what a lot of you guys in the media say to him um, is helping him. Um, a lot of people, we had a chat with Benson before um, a couple of games ago where you're reading a lot of stuff in the press about, oh, he needs to drop in. And it's almost as though people want him to be Lionel Messi. And you're like, oh, and look, there's moments to drop in. And you saw that today. There was a lovely moment where he, he was in an offside position. He checked into the pocket and a little outside of the boot to lay it off to Austin on the run in the first half. And then he pushed it through, I think, to Papi on the run. And so that's when you drop in. But, you know, if you read a lot of stuff on the blogs and in the papers, you'd think he has to be playing like Dennis Bergkamp, you know, in terms of in there. But that's not his strength. His strength is to focus on those spaces behind the opponents and um, moving when he needs to move, but being explosive when he does it. Don't go and stand in the number 10 position. If I want the number 10, you know, I ask Austin to do it. I ask Lowy to do it. Um, and so, again, it's just there's a lot of noise when you're a young player scoring goals about the extra stuff you need to do. And yes, we always need to add to someone's game, and we are adding to it, but don't do it at the sacrifice of what makes you a really talented player. So I think it was just about making sure he was focusing on what he needed to focus on, and that's getting into those spaces and, and putting the ball in the back of the net. Coach, um, he looks more intelligent uh, just on Benson Omala. He looks more intelligent. He looks, uh, he can play the one foot with his, uh, with his uh, players around him. Is it extra training that you've been having with him? It's 
just look, I think Benson, he, he's not more intelligent. He's always been football intelligent. It just takes time. If you take someone to school, if, if, I don't know how many in this room have children, but if you take someone to school when they're five years old, they don't learn everything on day one. They might be the next Einstein, but they don't know it after six months or a year or two years. They have to learn and develop, and you've got to teach them in a progressive way. You don't build the roof of the house first. You've got to build the first floor and the, and the second floor. So we're adding all the time to Benson. and he's an eager learner, but it's also about not throwing everything at someone at once. And that's, it's not just about him, it's all across the team. You look at Jeffrey Ocheng, you look at Alpha Onyango, you look at Joshua Onyango. There's so many players in that team who you look at 18 months ago, and they are better players today than they were then. And it's because we're teaching. You know, not just me, but Michael Nam, Bonface Aluch, you know, John Thomas on our staff. Everyone's teaching every day, and it's just a, it's a process. Um, talking about the improvement of the team, yes, uh, the team looks to be, have improved. They look more dominant. They control the game more than they were last season. Um, would you say the team is much better this season than last season? Yeah, I think we went out. Last season, we were very slim, obviously, in terms of the roster. Um, we only had 18 outfield players in the first leg. And then we're doing so well that even when you sign players, you don't want to tinker with it too much. You want to try and keep those guys who are playing well. But we had a very clear strategy in the offseason. We knew what players we needed to add. And that wasn't even like, we let some players go. You know, we let some players go that were difficult decisions. But you've got to make difficult decisions to take a step forward sometimes. And so we felt we added good technical, we added good speed, we added good experience, and also good physicality. So, yeah, I've always said we can, we can beat teams playing football, we can play, beat teams playing physical if they want, and you need that because it's a long season and you need to be able to have different, different weapons that you can use. We're looking to win the next game. That's all we're looking at. Yeah, we'll see where that takes us. So, first of all, next game of this in task against the game. Look, I think Tusker are somewhat in the same boat as our, our friends today at AFC, is that they signed a lot of players. Yeah, you notice we didn't sign lots. We signed maybe four or five for consideration for starting places, and we signed another two or three who are younger players who were going to grow and they'll get some minutes. Whereas Tusker signed a lot of players, um, AFC signed a lot of players, and it takes time. It's just you don't just throw players out onto a football pitch and expect them to win football matches. So, yeah, look, there are good players um, at Ruaraka, at Tusker. There's one or two that we would have taken if they were available. But, yeah, they, they were, they're a dangerous opponent. Um, and coming off the Shibana game, I was at the game yesterday, I thought Shibana were well worth their victory. I don't think there can be any complaints. They 100% deserve to win. But like, you know, uh, Robert Matano, he's not going to be happy with that. And he's going to be, he's got two weeks now where his players are going to be well drilled to come into our next game here at Kasarani. And so we need to be ready for that. Coach, maybe from the school selection and the way the team has been playing, what can you say to the fate of the, some of the senior players we've known before, Philemon, uh, Wendo, and a couple of players are also out of contract? Yeah, so, like I said, there were some difficult um, decisions to make. I believe, obviously, our chairman clarified Blackberry's position. Obviously, George, we informed him at the start of preseason that we didn't see a future for him um, in the team. And you have to give respect to players because you don't want to mishandle players. And telling them early so that they can make decisions about their lives and their families is really important. So, back in July, but George was quite comfortable to sit and... You know, he's been training with us, wasn't registered to play, but he wanted to see out his contract. And his contract ended two days ago, and, and so that's it. You know, we wish George the very best. You know, he obviously leaves us with many fond memories. You know, he's been a giant at this club. George has been a true giant at the club. And um, so we wish him all the best. And, you know, wherever he ends up in the mid-season transfer window, if that's what he chooses to do, no doubt he'll cause us one or two problems when he plays against us. Because it's not that he's a bad player. It's just when you see the likes of Sibomana, you see the likes of Mugisha, we've got young Alvin Ocheng, who you haven't seen on the field yet. But 
there's a lot of speed and technical and young Bryson came on towards the end there and we just felt the time was right to usher that new generation in. Philemon and Wendo, a little bit different. Um, Wendo played almost all the games last year. I love Ernest, he is a top, top professional. But he has a problem that Kevin Juma came in and started the first game and has held onto that shirt. He's played so well. But the ultimate professional, Wando, if I wanted to start Wando tomorrow, he's ready to start. Yeah. Today you saw when he came off the bench, he was a giant in the midfield. So the quality is there, but you can't play all of the players. Philemon, ultimate professional again, you know. We spoke to Philemon earlier in preseason. He knew we were signing Rooney Onyango. He knows we have, um, we have Paul Achuga, who started more games last season at right back. And we said that, look, you've got a year left on your contract. What do you want to do? He wanted to stay and fight. But look, he's, again, he's another player that if we need him to play tomorrow, if we think it's the right decision for him to play, he's fit and he's ready to play. But like, what a fantastic club captain. You know, the best way I can compare it is at Newcastle United, Jamal Lascelles is the club captain, but doesn't play that often. But you saw Lascelles come on in the Champions League the other night and play like he played every game of the season. Philemon's the same. A fantastic professional. We love having him at the club. We're glad he decided to stay. And he's ready when we need him. <laughs> Look, um, it's, it's great. You know, we want to give the fans those happy days. You know, for me, that's the key thing. We want the supporters to go away and enjoy um, their weekend, to enjoy their evening tonight. Um.